The Swift Programming Language, Swift 5.6 Beta Edition, copyright 2022 by Apple, made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Basic Operators. An operator is a special symbol or phrase that you use to check, change, or combine values. For example, the addition operator adds two numbers, as in let i equals 1 plus 2, and the logical AND operator combines two Boolean values, as in if enter door code AND AND past retina scan. Swift supports the operators you may already know from languages like C and improves several capabilities to eliminate common coding errors. The assignment operator does not return a value to prevent it from being mistakenly used when the equal to operator is intended. Arithmetic operators detect and disallow value overflow to avoid unexpected results when working with numbers that become larger or smaller than the allowed value range of the type that stores them. You can opt in to value overflow behavior by using Swift's overflow operators as described in overflow operators. Swift also provides range operators that are not found in C, such as a dot dot less than b and a dot 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 b as a shortcut for expressing a range of values. This chapter describes the common operators in Swift. Advanced operators cover Swift's advanced operators and describes how to define your own custom operators and implement the standard operators for your own custom types. Terminology. Operators are unary, binary, or ternary. Unary operators operate on a single target, such as minus a. Unary prefix operators appear immediately before their target, such as exclamation mark b, and unary postfix operators appear immediately after their target, such as C exclamation mark. Binary operators operate on two targets, such as 2 plus 3, and are infix because they appear between their two targets. Ternary operators operate on three targets. Like C, Swift has only one ternary operator, the ternary conditional operator. The values that operators affect are operands. In the expression 1 plus 2, the plus symbol is an infix operator, and its two operands are the values 1 and 2. The assignment operator, a equals b, initializes or updates the value of a with the value of b. If the right side of the assignment is a tuple with multiple values, its elements can be decomposed into multiple constants or variables at once. Unlike the assignment operator in C and object of C, the assignment operator in Swift does not return a value. This statement is not valid. This feature prevents the assignment operator from being used by accident when the equal to operator with two equal signs is actually intended. By making if x equal y invalid, Swift helps you to avoid these kinds of errors in your code. Swift supports the four standard arithmetic operators for all number types, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Unlike the arithmetic operators in C and object of C, the Swift arithmetic operators do not allow values to overflow by default. You can opt in to value overflow behavior by using Swift's overflow operators, such as A ampersand plus B, C overflow operators. The addition operator is also supported for string concatenation. The remainder operator, A percent B, works out how many multiples of B will fit inside A and returns the value that is left over, known as the remainder. Note, the remainder operator is also known as the modulo operator in other languages. However, its behavior in Swift for negative numbers means that, strictly speaking, it is a remainder rather than a modulo operation. Here's how the remainder operator works. To calculate 9% 4, you first work out how many 4s will fit inside 9. You can fit two 4s inside 9, and the remainder is 1, shown in orange. In Swift, this would be written as 9% 4 equals 1. To determine the answer for A% percent B, the percent operator calculates the following equation and returns remainder as its output. A equals B times sum multiplier plus remainder, where sum multiplier is the largest number of multiples that B will fit inside A. Inserting 9 and 4 into this equation yields 9 equals 4 times 2 plus 1. 
The same method is applied when calculating the remainder for a negative value of a. Negative 9 percent 4 equals negative 1. Inserting negative 9 and 4 into the equation yields negative 9 equals 4 times negative 2 plus negative 1, giving a remainder value of negative 1. The sign of b is ignored for negative values of b. This means that a percent b and a percent negative b always give the same answer. Unary minus operator. The sign of a numeric value can be toggled using a prefixed minus sign known as the unary minus operator. The unary minus operator is prepended directly before the value it operates on without any white space. Unary plus operator. The unary plus operator simply returns the value it operates on without any change. Although the unary plus operator does not actually do anything, you can use it to provide symmetry in your code for positive numbers when also using the unary minus operator for negative numbers. Compound assignment operators. Like C, Swift provides compound assignment operators that combine assignment with another operation. One example is the addition assignment operator. The expression a plus equals 2 is shorthand for a equals a plus 2. Effectively, the addition and the assignment are combined into one operator that performs both tasks at the same time. Note, the compound assignment operators do not return a value. For example, you cannot write let b equals a plus equals 2. For information about the operators provided by the Swift standard library, see operator declarations. Swift supports the following comparison operators. Equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Note, Swift also provides two identity operators, which you use to test whether two object references both refer to the same object instance. For more information, see identity operators. Each of the comparison operators returns a bool value to indicate whether or not the statement is true. 1 equal equal 1 is true because 1 is equal to 1. 2 not equal to 1 is true because 2 is not equal to 1. 2 is greater than 1 is true because 2 is greater than 1. 1 is less than 2 is true because 1 is less than 2. 1 is greater than or equal to 1 is true because 1 is greater than or equal to 1 and 2 is less than or equal to 1 is false because 2 is not less than or equal to 1. Comparison operators are often used in conditional statements such as the if statement. For more about the if statement, see control flow. You can compare two tuples if they have the same type and the same number of values. Tuples are compared from left to right, one value at a time, until the comparison finds two values that are not equal. Those two values are compared, and the result of that comparison determines the over result of the tuple comparison. If all elements are equal, then the tuples themselves are equal. In the top example, you can see the left to right comparison behavior on the first line. Because 1 is less than 2, 1 comma zebra is considered less than 2 comma apple, regardless of any other values in the tuples. It does not matter that zebra is not less than apple because the comparison is already determined by the tuple's first elements. However, when the tuple's first elements are the same, their second elements are compared. This is what happens on the second and third line. Tuples can be compared with a given operator only if the operator can be applied to each value in the respective tuple. For example, as demonstrated in the code below, you can compare two tuples of type string, comma, int because both string and int values can be compared using the less than sign operator. In contrast, two tuples of type string, comma, bool cannot be compared with the less than operator because the less than operator cannot be applied to bool values. Note, the Swift standard library includes tuple comparison operators for tuples with fewer than seven elements. To compare tuples with seven or more elements, you must implement the comparison operators yourself. The ternary conditional operator is a special operator with three parts, which takes the form question, question mark, answer one, colon, answer two. It is a shortcut for evaluating one of two expressions based on whether question is true or false. If question is true, it evaluates answer one and returns its value. Otherwise, it evaluates answer two and returns its value. The ternary conditional operator is shorthand for this code.
Here is an example which calculates the height for a table row. The row height should be 50 points taller than the content height if the row has a header and 20 points taller if the row does not have a header. This example above is shorthand for the code below. The first example's use of the ternary conditional operator means that row height can be set to the correct value on a single line of code, which is more concise than the code used in the second example. The ternary conditional operator provides an efficient shorthand for deciding which of two expressions to consider. Use the ternary conditional operator with care, however. Its conciseness can lead to hard to read code if overused. Avoid combining multiple instances of the ternary conditional operator into one compound statement. The nil coalescing operator, A question mark question mark B, unwraps an optional A if it contains a value or returns a default value of B if A is nil. The expression A is always of an optional type. The expression B must match the type that is stored inside A. The nil coalescing operator is shorthand for this code. The code uses the ternary conditional operator and forced unwrapping to access the value wrapped inside A when A is not nil and to return B otherwise. The nil coalescing operator provides a more elegant way to encapsulate this conditional checking and unwrapping in a concise and readable form. Note, if the value of A is non-nil, the value of B is not evaluated. This is known as short circuit evaluation. The middle example uses the nil coalescing operator to choose between a default color name and an optional user defined color name. The user defined color name variable is defined as an optional string with the default value of nil. Because user defined color name is of an optional type, you can use the nil coalescing operator to consider its value. In this example, the operator is used to determine an initial value for a string variable called color name to use. Because user defined color name is nil, the expression user defined color name with the nil coalescing operator default color name returns the value of default color name or red. If you assign a non nil value to user defined color name and perform the nil coalescing operator check again, the value wrapped inside user defined color name is used instead of the default. Swift includes several range operators, which are shortcuts for expressing a range of values. The closed range operator, A dot 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 B, defines a range that runs from A to B and includes the values A and B. The value of A must not be greater than B. The closed range operator is useful when iterating over a range in which you want all of the values to be used, such as with the for in loop. For more about for in loops, see control flow. The half open range operator, A dot dot less than b defines a range that runs from a to b but does not include b. It is said to be half open because it contains the first value but not its final value. As with the closed range operator, the value of a must not be greater than b. If the value of a is equal to b, then result, the resulting range will be empty. Half open ranges are particularly useful when you work with zero based lists such as arrays where it is useful to count up to but not including the length of the list. Note that the array contains four items but zero dot dot less than count only counts as far as three which is the index of the last item in the array because it is a half open range. For more about arrays see arrays. One sided ranges. The closed range operator has an alternative form for ranges that continue as far as possible in one direction. For example, a range that includes all the elements of an array from index 2 to the end of the array. In these cases, you can omit the value from one side of the range operator. This kind of range is called a one-sided range because the operator has a value on only one side. The half-open range operator also has a one-sided form that is written with only its final value. Just like when you include a value on both sides, the final value is not part of the range. One-sided ranges can be used in other contexts, not just in subscripts. You cannot iterate over a one-sided range that omits a first value because it is not clear where iteration should begin. You can iterate over a one-sided range that omits its final value, however, because the range continues indefinitely. Make sure you add an explicit end condition for the loop. You can also check whether a one-sided range contains a particular value as shown in this code. 
Logical operators modify or combine the Boolean logic values true and false. Swift supports the three standard logical operators found in C-based languages, logical not, logical and, logical or. The logical not operator inverts a Boolean value so that true becomes false and false becomes true. The logical not operator is a prefix operator and appears immediately before the value it operates on without any white space. It can be read as not a as seen in this example. The phrase if not allowed entry can be read as if not allowed entry. The subsequent line is only executed if not allowed entry is true, that is, if allowed entry is false. As in this example, careful choice of Boolean constant and variable names can help to keep code readable and concise while avoiding double negatives or confusing logic statements. The logical AND operator creates logical expressions where both values must be true for the overall expression to also be true. If either value is false, the overall expression will also be false. In fact, if the first value is false, the second value will not even be evaluated because it cannot possibly make the overall expression equate to true. This is known as short circuit evaluation. This example considers two bool values and only allows access if both values are true. The logical OR operator is an infix operator made from two adjacent pipe characters. You use it to create logical expressions in which only one of the two values has to be true for the overall expression to be true. Like the logical AND operator above, the logical OR operator uses short circuit evaluation to consider its expressions. If the left side of a logical OR expression is true, the right side is not evaluated because it cannot change the outcome of the overall expression. In this example, the first bool value, has door key, is false, but the second value, knows override password, is true. Because one value is true, the overall expression also evaluates to true and access is allowed. Combining logical operators. You can combine multiple logical operators to create longer compound expressions. This example uses multiple logical AND and logical OR operators to create a longer compound expression. However, the logical AND and logical OR operators still operate on only two values, so this is actually three smaller expressions chained together. The example can be read as, if we've entered the correct door code and passed the retina scan, or if we have a valid door key, or if we know the emergency override password, then allow access. Based on the values of entered door code, passed retina scan, and has door key, the first two sub-expressions are false. However, the emergency override password is known, so the overall compound expression still evaluates to true. Note, the Swift logical operators are left associative meaning that compound expressions with multiple logical operators evaluate the leftmost sub-expression first. Explicit parentheses. It is sometimes useful to include parentheses when they are not strictly needed to make the intention of a complex expression easier to read. In the door access example, it is useful to add a parentheses around the first part of the compound expression to make its intent explicit. The parentheses make it clear that the first two values are considered as part of a separate possible state in the overall logic. The output of the compound expression does not change, but the overall intention is clearer to the reader. Readability is always preferred over brevity. Use parentheses where they help to make your intentions clear.